and military applications of the Orion vehicle, where apparently they dreamed up all sorts of wild ideas. A sort of colorful one is the doomsday weapon, where you used Orion to launch a, an enormous, largest physical possible hydrogen bomb that would be left in orbit over the Soviet Union at, at a very high altitude, and then at the you know then then in Washington would be the the big red button that if all else failed you you press that button and there you know there went the Soviet Union of course there also went the the climate of the northern hemisphere or whatever but it was that was seriously looked at nobody thought it was a good idea but the physics was done to determine what would happen if you did this as a military vehicle of course it was obviously the the cat's meow it could have evolved into something that was like the Death Star with the it would have had the uh, ability probably to decimate an entire planet if not decimated it would make living there hell The Death Star concept excited the generals at Strategic Air Command, always on the lookout for new ways to enforce peace. As far as the Air, Air Force is concerned, it's a weapon system in space. And that was almost a dirty word at those days, a weapon system in space, you know, especially a nuclear one. Thomas Powers, who was... Uh, second in command of Strategic Air Command. His response was, whoever controls Orion will control the world. And uh, it had to be an American project. And he wanted, you know, to give it the billion dollar full speed go ahead. General Power ordered General Atomics to make a display model of Orion in full battle dress to show to President Kennedy. This turned out to be a mistake. There's one model that probably still exists, and someone watching this film may know where it is. Everyone talks about it, and it was the size of a car. And it was a model of this uh, Orion battleship, and it had cassava howitzer, you know, nuclear cannons, and it had uh, 25 megaton missiles that could, you know, destroy half the world and it could turn around and protect itself by by you know it could hide behind its own pusher plate the model was shown to president kennedy and was apparently horrified that this was just the last thing the world needed was you know a giant nuclear weapons race in space it was another nail in the coffin in the five years since project orion began the world had changed Concern about radioactive fallout from the bomb tests was turning to outrage. Strontium-90 was turning up in milk and babies' teeth. The public had seen the pictures from Hiroshima, and the Cuban Missile Crisis had brought the world to the brink of nuclear Armageddon. Suddenly, all things atomic were out of fashion. From the beginning of Project Orion, fallout had been among Freeman Dyson's concerns. He wanted to know how much radioactivity each Orion flight would add to the world total. I wanted to know very precisely how many people would this fallout actually harm. And uh, until I knew the answer to that question, I, I certainly wasn't prepared to, to fly in any, in, 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 in any of these ships and, and or to add to it to approve the project in general. So I made that a high priority myself, to deal with this question of fallout. Well, I did the calculations, and they weren't very encouraging. Every time you took off and, and, and flew off into space, I calculated we would probably kill about somewhere between one and ten people as a result of radioactive fallout. And that, to me, was unacceptable. And, and uh, so I said always right at the start, well, we've got to clean up the bombs and, 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 and use much cleaner bombs. If we got it down to something like a hundredth of a person, 
then, then I would consider that acceptable. I mean, it was a question, it was a question of judgment. You can never do anything, of course, without risk to people, but at least you, it, 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 you didn't want to be sure of killing somebody. By 1963, Dyson's concerns about fallout had become conviction. As a consultant to the International Disarmament Agency, he had to choose between Project Orion and an end to all atmospheric bomb tests. I knew that this test ban treaty that we were negotiating would be the final nail in the coffin of Orion. And still, of course, I said, yes, it should definitely should go ahead. And, and, uh, and I remember telling Ted Taylor that I was partly responsible for the test ban treaty. And it, it was so sad for Ted. And, and in, a, in a way, for me, that was, I mean, it was, it was just obvious by that time that the, Ted, the test ban treaty was right and that Orion had to give way. We just got the orders to, you know, shut her down. And uh, that we did. And that ended uh, Orion. I'm totally opposed to any further development of any nuclear explosives, certainly, uh, of any kind, for any purpose. Uh, with one exception, and that is Orion. If we were be able to do nuclear testing today, to test it, I, you know, I'm pretty confident that we would get to do it. If I had a lifespan of two or three hundred years, I would give somebody odds that it will be built, that it will be flown. Now let's hope it doesn't suddenly appear in the sky like Sputnik and it's belongs to an unfriendly rival. <laughs> the knowledge generated by the Orion scientists is still there, much of it top secret and highly dangerous. A number of the things that were developed in Project Orion are still active military programs. And you can guess that if you talk to people and you'll see what they can talk about and what they can't. You very quickly come to areas that, that still cannot be talked about. Why can't they be talked about? Probably because they're still they're active. We know they're active. There's a great deal of work still going on, particularly with small directed energy nuclear weapons, which you know, have obvious military applications. It could be used to take out deep bunkers where there's only bad people. You say, well, there's only going to be bad people in these bunkers. Let's use one of these things. That's a very dangerous, tempting thing. If Orion technology could break the taboo on battlefield nuclear weapons, its potential might also be exploited by terrorists. Orion bomb designs use small amounts of expensive plutonium and large amounts of relatively cheap high explosive. 